So last week, we made a video going over swords, all the perks you should look for, things that were really standing out to us, as well as some of the exotic swords. Now, a sword that we left off our list in that video was actually this sword right here that just came back to us here in Season of the Worthy, Honor's Edge. Now, Honor's Edge is really not that unique. It's an adaptive frame sword. It's got that heavy uppercut attack, but that's not what makes this sword special. No, what makes Honor's Edge special is a new trait called flash counter so first up on this sword by the way big shout out to potato jim here for landing this role we have hungry edge for that increase in sword ammo which we're intentionally trying to do there i know we like to raise impact from most of the swords because you're trying to get the most out of it damage wise but that's not the point to the sword next up our guard is heavy guard we chose this one because it actually increases our defenses although i would probably choose a better guard than this We'll talk about that a little more. Energy transfer is our first trait. Guarding while receiving damage generates that class ability energy. Extremely beneficial for all classes. I really like it on the Warlock class, right? You're up against the enemy's nutsack. You need to drop yourself a healing rift as you're doing sword damage to them. Energy transfer is something that can refund you that class ability energy very quickly, depending on how much damage you block. And of course, how much sword energy you have available to block with. But you can actually see and watch it convert into class ability energy as you block damage pretty nice and it doesn't burn up any ammo because of the sword changes in 2.8.0 now the final trait there flash counter you no know, i kind of kept you waiting there melee blocks immediately after guarding disorients and weakens the attacker oh that's interesting right yes it is so much so that when i talked about swords last week and which swords were impressing me the most i was kind of scared i didn't want to say too much because i was like whoa 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 cross you're making a video about swords but you're not talking about the one wild card Card here which could potentially be the best sword in the game turns out nah not really kind of sucks too man i was really hyped for the sword so flash counter when you go to block it does what it says it does it disorients your enemy and it weakens them actually giving you 20 percent more damage with any weapon for nearly seven seconds it's around 6.57 seconds which is actually a pretty good duration there for simply just blocking with your sword and for the most part for any type of stop attack or melee attack from an enemy i would recommend blocking now a 20 percent debuff or buff i haven't quite figured out what exactly it is and we'll get into that a little more 20% more damage is still very nice. Proccing back-to-back 20% buffs on enemies that are simply meleeing you sounds like a win-win, right? Kinda not. Here's the thing. You actually have to sit down and wait for the enemy to melee you. Sometimes that's immediately. Sometimes that enemy just decides to just blaze you down with whatever ranged weapon despite you being within stomping territory of that enemy. Another issue I have with Disorient is it doesn't seem like you can disorient bosses, which I know that's probably for balance reasons and stuff whatever now not being able to disorient bosses actually throws everything off a bit because disorienting those bosses opens things up it applies that 20 percent buff and then it lets you do damage pretty freely during that six to seven seconds without just getting stomped to bits unfortunately that's not the case with bosses now you probably see that i'm calling flash counter here a buff now the reason for that is i was actually standing in my well of radiance i would go to block and flash counter would not proc matter of fact if i procced it outside of the well and the moment i stepped into the well flash counter would go away and the way the current system works it's one buff and one debuff you cannot stack buffs together and the highest buff takes over and considering that well and weapons of light and things like that gives you a higher percentage buff than flash counter this really starts to limit this perk and trait to the point where i started to realize that bungie did not want us to utilize this adaptive sword in damage phases as in most boss engagements when you're about to do damage phase or even at the end of a strike it's a good chance you're saving your bubble or your well for that encounter flash counter almost seems like a trait bungie wants us to utilize when taking on champions which is kind of a tough one charging down a barrier champion or unstoppable champion or an overload champion with a sword is not an easy thing to do especially considering the champion these captains they like to teleport a bunch they are super annoying and despite them being overload champions and i'm even rocking the overload mod they are still hell to deal with and understand when you close that gap with a sword you're exposed they can hit you with a melee which pretty much almost one bangs you even with the mod that allows me to tank more damage while wielding a sword i was getting melted very very fast now let me go ahead and get 
give you the pros that flash counter presents probably the biggest pro is that 20 percent buff that's applied works for you and your fire team and it doesn't just work with sword damage that's right you could swap to other weapons i was swapping the fourth horseman and doing damage with it you're essentially allowing yourself to gain a 20 percent buff by simply blocking a melee that's pretty much it which takes us to the cons. You know how I said simply blocking a melee? Turns out blocking a melee is not as simple as we think. You see, flash counter is kind of like counterattack. You actually have to block the melee pretty much immediately, which actually results in us sitting there underneath the target, not blocking at all, and waiting for the target to finally attack, which can be awkward. Sometimes they attack immediately with the melee. Sometimes they don't ideally we want them to attack pretty much immediately so we can block immediately get the 20 percent buff do our damage and get out the situations that i ran into was actually sitting there waiting for the enemy to actually finally melee me which resulted in every other ad completely going in on me and during that time frame it's really rough because you're like trying to bob and weave and keep yourself alive and if you have a rift you definitely want to pop it in these situations which is why energy transfer is very very important but even then you're taking a lot of damage and if you happen to miss and mess up the melee block with your sword nine times out of ten you're just gonna have to pull out so you just wasted all that time trying to get a buff off that realistically in comparison to other buffs in the game is just not worth it which is where i wish bungie would separate this perk depending on the enemy i wish bosses it would apply that buff duration for longer maybe 12 seconds considering that you cannot disorient those bosses and then for champions and whatever else it still stays six seconds but the disorient effect makes up for that the situation that i found though when using honor's edge with flash counter was that everything that i was doing would be better simply on the titan class simply if i was actually using strongholds a strongholds would have allowed me to heal myself even after taking all that damage by simply blocking with that clenched fist exotic perk so honor's edge is this sword worth you going after for flash counter i don't think so guys to me the buff is too little with too small of a duration but the biggest kicker to that one is the lack of ease of use if i was able to actually like stop drop in on a target and then just stand there and block tanking the damage from ads while not getting destroyed underneath that boss and then that high health target finally makes contact with me with a melee and it's still proc flash counter i would probably actually give this trade a thumbs up the problem is is that's not the case it requires that immediate block similar to counterattack without the upside of the great buff that counterattack presents granted it doesn't have the same duration as flash counter but it allows you to get in and out which is kind of like the selling points to swords right it's doing these high spurts of attacks with a lot of damage real fast and then get out of that situation or at least that's how i treat swords and in high end pv activities that's really how you're supposed to treat them which when we sit down and we actually compare this to all the other sword traits pretty much every other buff does more damage to flash counter the only selling point to something like flash is in team engagements but even then your fire team is gonna have to sit there and wait for you to go in there get melee consistently proc the perk before they actually start doing damage you see where i'm coming from now in terms of what should be the god role here on honor's edge it has all these high damage perks counter attack surround it shattering blade and on guard i really don't know which one of these perks is the best i like counter attack a bunch but it also got a huge duration nerf this season pretty much all these perks here except for surround it got a nerf and surround it is really not much easier to proc than flash counter in certain boss scenarios when we start looking at like master knife boss if you don't take those ads out before trying to approach close quarter combat with a champion you're dead so proccing something like surrounded by having three or more enemies around you in close enough proximity is not exactly advantageous what swords like honor's edge outlined to me is that despite the changes to them this season despite them being good when it comes to taking down ads for high end pv activity i just don't see them here yet not by themselves you got to pair it with things certain subclasses to close that gap effectively or utilize something like black talent from a range considering it has that range sword attack normal swords like honor's edge that can only have one major damage dealing perk and that final column puts all of its eggs into that basket of being a support weapon and unfortunately the support version of this which is what you see in front of you just doesn't have the ease of use now that's not to say it won't have it in the future or there won't be other changes to allow you to effectively proc something like flash counter just as 
of now. This sword with this trait combination is not really working for me. I think if we would have actually had flash counter in that first trait column alongside one of these damage dealing perks, then I might actually be like, all right, this could work. Matter of fact, if we ever see a sword in the future with flash counter and whirlwind blade, I would be so down for that. Proc something like flash counter, do those light attacks for like four or five seconds, then proceed to do a heavy attack once all your sword energy comes back. That in combination with that 20% buff from flash counter would actually be nasty i don't know if it's ever gonna happen but that's what i would look out for well let me know in the comments below what you think of this weapon there are some really good rolls on it you can still utilize it with things like surrounded if you don't have a surrounded sword although i still like gold tusk more with surrounded you can still get it with things like counter attack flash counter to me was the biggest trait that i was more focused on which is why this review is more of a flash counter review than an honors edge review either way it goes i think this sword would serve you just fine alongside pretty much every other sword just understand that swords even in this sandbox are still limited there's still certain bosses that will relentlessly stomp you there's also bosses that don't even have legs you know what i mean they stand in the sky so you can't even hit the bastards with the sword so keep that in mind guys swords are better but even in this sandbox there's a lot of risk with marginal reward fellas and ladies thank you all for coming and watching and as always slap that like button like your mama told you right